Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. This is one in a series of five videos where we show you great methods that trade professionals use to stow the cords. In this case, we're gonna show you how to do a cord bucket. Very inexpensive, effective, and we'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Stick around. To build a cord bucket is a really simple affair. All you need is a five gallon or seven gallon utility bucket. Obviously you can get these from all the home improvement stores, paint stores, all sorts of even feed stores. But a bucket like this, something with coloration tends to last a bit longer out in the sun I found. So uh, you can utilize a bucket like this. The next thing you need is a whole saw set. I really like this little set from Milwaukee, but this needs to be big enough that when I cut a hole in the side the bucket down here that the cord end, the male end of the cord will come through that hole and you'll see that'll work just fine. Of course a drill motor to do uh, drive and to cut these and then you just need a, a set of drill bits. Uh, we're going to use probably 3 16 or 8 inch to drill a series of holes at the bottom of the bucket so that if this bucket is open and you get some rainwater in it or it gets condensation in it, it'll tend to weep out instead of creating a swamp inside of this bucket. All right, and of course, when you get the bucket, you want a lid with it. Now, in my case, with this lid, if you look close, I actually took this on the bandsaw or jigsaw or coping saw or whatever you've got, and I cut a little set of notches approximately every two inches around simply to make it easy to pull this open, to pop it on and off so it isn't a hassle factor. You don't need that at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day when you're trying to get going where you can't get the lid off. So that's gonna uh, serve us well. Okay, let's go ahead and get, uh, get this constructed. Okay, choose a spot on the bucket and I always go up about, oh, that far, a couple centimeters or about an inch up and then drill on the side of the bucket uh, right here, this is where the male end of the cord is going to come out. First step done. Now let's go ahead and drill some holes in the bottom. So I drill around six holes around here, so we'll just do this. Okay, so now your bucket is ready to take the cord. Now go ahead and take the male end of the cord, feed it down in the bucket, out the side of the hole there, pull a little bit of a pigtail out the side long enough to where it can be plugged in, but we'll stow that better in just a moment. So this could be plugged into an outlet or job site extension cord, uh, main power tap. And now you're simply gonna coil the cord in. All right, this link's about right for plugging in, but it doesn't transport real well. This is in the way, this is a risk of getting damaged, it gets caught on things. So what I do is shorten the cord, and to do that, look down inside of this bucket here, and you'll see what I do is I push this back in, and when I do, you can see that, what which item it is, just pull it and get it shortened up, but I don't put it back in, because you don't want to go hunting for it, about like that. Now this is ready to transport once you put the lid on. All right, now you've pulled out this, you're ready to plug in, you're ready to use your cord, you can take off the lid here, reach in and get your tap in, splay it out, and you're ready to go to work. Now there's several modifications, and uh, you probably have some of your own favorite, and if you wish to share those with your fellow viewer family members, do so in the comments below. But here are some of the modifications I've seen to this lid, or different kind of lids you can get. For instance, some lids have a half hinge on it, and you can get those sometimes from feed stores, those types of places where the lid goes down but half of it hinges up, allowing you to pull the cord out, keep the lid on it, and then uh, when you're done at the end of the day, you feed it back through, flip the lid on the other half, and everything's back in, and then you just feed this in, and that's done. A second one is to put another hole or a notch 
uh, right on the edge here that is just big enough for the cable to come out of the side so you can keep the lid with it at all times and this lid doesn't get lost. Uh, that's another modification that's really inexpensive to do and keeps it relatively dry inside. A third one that I've seen that is pretty cool uh, is to actually make this lid the uh, an outlet end. Now that means that if you have some cordage but you don't like the end, and we really do like these tip, uh, triple tap ends, illuminated ends from Watts Wire, but if you have one that's not nearly as you, uh, useful, uh, you can cut the end off of this and with using Romex connectors and such, you could put a four or a couple duplex uh, 20 amp outlets on here. Uh, they're heavy duty and work well for construction. And now you have an outlet here. Couple caveats, okay? Number one, it's never a good idea to use heavily loaded coiled wire. And when I say heavily loaded, where you're drawing a lot of amperage through it. So let's say for instance, you have on the job site, a moderate sized compressor, you're running a table saw, you have um, also um, other tools that are intermediate like miter saw and all that. Well, all those running together at the same time can exceed the deliverable capacity of the cordage. And because it's coiled like this, you're gonna get some warmth. Uh, matter of fact, this thing can really heat up. So it's always better to pull out uh, the cable. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that when you put cordage inside of something like this, you could see as I was putting it, loading it into uh, the bucket, I actually had to coil it to have it go in, just like you would a hose. Now what happens there is you're actually creating a very long spiral with a wind in it, and that means that you're gonna develop some cord memory. And if you bought an inexpensive, i.e. cheap, cord that's stiff, has just the really hard plastic uh, PVC only coating on the outside instead of this rubberized softer, it's gonna tend, especially in cold weather, to not lay flat when it's played out along your work surface or on the floor, which can create a trip hazard or it's just a little bit loopy. So, but you get a lot of cord in a very small area and this is very convenient to take on and off uh, the job site and to load it in. You can paint them, make them so it's really clearly your uh, bucket if you're working with several other trades. So this is an inexpensive, quick way using pretty much found materials to end up with a great system. Now, we have created four other episodes for you that show four other great methods for winding cords that all sorts of trade professionals like yourself use. So take a look at those and see if there's anything there you can use. Make sure to comment in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out this video where we tell you what you really got to know about cord reels that you mount in your shop in your garage area. There's a couple critical factors that really make a difference of how happy you're gonna be with that device. And also check out this other video from our catalog that YouTube thinks is perfect for you. And so do we. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.